Does get hit on the spike jet. going on youtube we've got a banger on our hands and sure enough it is going to be in the form of four individual series for this week's mobile mayhem breakdown of course you've got uh each and every 
individual series going to be uploaded moving forward as uh, VODs are not going to be available on Trovo. We can't live stream on YouTube anymore, which is a, a Debbie Downer, but it's okay. We're going to turn that frown upside down with a few uh, videos for ourselves. So make sure you like the video. And if you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on moving forward. Without further ado, we'll go ahead and jump right into the action. All righty, our third series of the day. I said we're going to have bangers on our hand. Well, guess what, ladies and gentlemen? We got a lobby full of sweats. It's FN420, Animus, squaring off at the best of three. And this is going to be another one. In the words of DJ Khaled, homie, I don't think I could have said it any better myself. Hot damn. We've got a best of three on our hands. And I've got to say, this is probably going to be just as good as our first two series, if not better. It's a big, big test for FN420 in my eyes. Animus are the current leaders of the Mobile Mayhem season, right? Uh, dethroning Tunix at Nova for the time being. I'm not saying it's going to be the case for the whole tournament, but that is a big sign of how good Animus have played currently on 80 points. That means I believe they've won all of their series 2-0, if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. So FM420, they're only on 10 points. They, if they win this, it will put them a lot closer to the likes of Anarchy for right for example who got zero points in today's games so a big test and a big opportunity for fn 420. yeah they got to put their best foot forward because this anime squad is just different we talk about the the, yes. the top of the top not just in point standing but in talent wise you've literally got two players on this roster who won one of the biggest 1v1 tournaments i get it it's 1v1 yeah but it just shows you how much better this roster is when it comes to individual talent that individual talent meshes so damn well with each other as well narcs obviously won the 1v1 sniper tournament and uh we've got shark who won the smg damn near won the uh ar2 bro is just built differently shark's not even in the lobby bro let me just tell you we haven't even seen that much of shark and yeah. this team still thrives without him like very very much so thrives so fn 420's got their work cut out for them I think that work actually starts off on a little bit of a slums hard point. So taking a look at that, uh, S&D firing range game number three is going to be a summit domination. And I got to be uh, gotta Wait. be frank with you. I don't think you've seen slums yet. No, I haven't. That's all. I, I was like, slums? Is that like a, a nickname or something? No, I haven't seen, or at least I haven't casted slums yet. So... I'm excited, and this is going to be, at least for me, I'm going to be kind of hanging on the back foot and just seeing how the teams play the map, right? Because, at least for me, I don't, I don't have that much experience in that regard of this map. So, hey, bring it on. Uh, I know it's going to be relatively new to the teams as well, within reason. I don't know how much scrimming they've done on the map, but uh, it's going to add an extra element of spice the series as a whole you know me bro i'm all about spice man anything you can get me into uh you know a hot wing challenge bro sign me up i need all the spice we can get here in this first game as uh, we're gonna be moving to the barrios the slums of panama the wife is from panama by the way so i i've been oh, really? meaning to ask her um, i've been meaning to show her like the trailer video i'll be like hey do any of these these points actually look familiar do you notice any of these you know, as a joke and just see if, you know, what she says, because obviously it's in Panama. She's from there. So we're going to see how accurate COD was when they made that particular map indeed. But uh, obviously it's it's not real, okay? But I do want to kind of hit her with it and be like, hey, does this look somewhat... Have you ever seen these points? Uh, do, 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 you do you know where the bomb here, sign is? You know? <laughs> do you know where the bomb sites are on the slums? I, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. She's going to be like, what are you talking about? Matt, shut your mouth, yeah. okay? <laughs> oh, man. Well, we're here for it. Everyone's in the lobby. Everyone's geared up. Prediction-wise, I think Animus takes this series. I think it's going to be a close fight, but I think it's going to be a little bit more that uh, FN420 won't be able to handle. Do you think it's going to be 2-0? Sadly, I think it does. I think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 
if it had of if the last series had gone to a game three, even though they've got kind of nothing to do with each other, I I would maybe have said two one in, in this, but I just can't help but feel that two zero Animus they're top of the leaderboard, they're there for a reason. I don't see them stopping anytime soon. We're gonna see how it goes now. We we didn't get to see a lot of Animus at the beginning of the season because you know we had a lot of DQs come through a lot of forfeits right now the the shots are going to come in p1 ringside round the rosy around the hill we go it is going to be fn420 with the initial hole but they are going to be taken down drari who was insta thirsted immediately upon entering the objective is going to be yet again shut down and fn420 they have themselves a little bit of momentum great start They're coming in all guns blazing p1 it's a little bit more open and rings around the rosy okay the walls are able to protect you to an extent but it's definitely a little bit easier said than done but you can see that they want to start as they means to go on has picks up one is gonna get shut down instantly 17 seconds left on this p point and it's very close initially it is real close to d but here comes one of the money hills the next point is going to be at the bottom of the hill you look at the map, it'll be in the bottom right-hand side of the screen. And there's three in, uh, points of entry, one of uh, two of which are literally funnels. The third is where you want to come through from, and that's the spawn site. So you can already see the focus from the side of uh, FN420. They're looking to cover all odds and ends. Cathelia and Drari looking to make the push. Cathelia is going to get the shots, but Drari is going to get the credit. Drari is going to be uh, shut down instantly afterwards. Now, the initial hold there from FN420 is going to be flipped. And the spawns, they are as well. This is going to be a big break and a sure hold for the side of Animus. Talking about flip, Ronan, is there any chance he can flip cartography? Because the teams are the one wrong way around as cautious firing on through 37 to 28. Very close between these two teams across this P2s. We're in the second half of the standings. Looking at the loadouts, Holger, R and R9. Okay, interesting. And a couple of Mac 10s uh, do like the balance coming out from this side of Animus in the early parts of this game, and it's definitely a little bit similar. SKS being utilized by Slayer, and that's a good gun for what I feel is this longer map. Long indeed. Now you see Marvel. He's trying to get to the very, very end of it. Try to flip those spawns and hold. Now as he's got the whole grid hand, used to seeing him with an SKS in his hand, but uh, obviously he's got a Holger indeed. R9, Grizz has been notorious for being the demon in the lobby. He is certainly being uh, one of the pests that uh, FN420 haven't been really able to deal with. On the flip side of things, Balance looking for some pure, clean objective time. Gets shut out. Faints there to quickly trade, but the objective in the hold break is going to come through. FN420 rocking and rolling. Solid win indeed. Now as we're neck and neck, I tell you. First player with the operator, the uh, Annihilator. He's going to find one to break. Looking like it might come through, but Balance laying on his tummy there. Oh, my God. Has spamming away the Sparrow. Does find a few kills, but not enough to hold the break or get into the objective. This is just... I mean, it's a dozy -si do right now. I, I tell you what. My first observations with this map is it is the one one of the most fast... It's, I would argue, the fastest paced um hardpoint maps like uh, more fast paced than um oh my god why do i forget the name of the map uh the, the winter map summit what summit summit yeah I, I think it's more fast paced than summit it is crazy of course i think both these teams are playing this balls to the wall and they want to try and grab hold of anything they can inside this game but this map Certainly, it's fast-paced. It is fast-paced and fast-paced indeed. We are going to be jumping in quickly for a listen-in. Our first team of choice is going to be FN420 as they have the spawns, the backside, the foot, uh, the objective. They've got the lead. And we're going to go ahead and see how the comps sound as they are buckling up for a P1 reset to go along with that. Oh. Front hill, front hill, front hill, front hill. No, we're dead, man. I shot on the garbage. Go, 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 Push new, push new, push new. So let's start to push this. Let's start to flip. Need to start flipping. We need to stop flipping. One's right, one's right, and one front of you. One's right, Vance. One's right, Vance. Front guys. I want to Miami. I mean, uh, I got contact. Well, one's right. Uh, he's going one's down. 
One blue. Uh, he's, he's in here. There's two in here. Blue, blue, blue. And I spawned behind them, guys. The one's in blue, has one's in blue. He's got a trophy. Oh, oh my see. god. He went back, he went back. Should've spawned, we should've spawned. I'm ready. He's in. He's blue, blue. He's one, he went, he went. Top, he went. One almost had. Nice, good. Guys, stay in the back. We don't this one. Yeah, stay in the back. We don't play this one. Nice, nice, nice. We can win this, guys. We can win this. Yeah, okay. I'm pushing one. Two grave, two grave. One shot. Dead. One more, one more. Push them hill, push them hill. Side, 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 dead. One more, hill. Side, 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 low. Side, side, low. Nice. Side, 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 one more next! Push left, push left, push left! One shot, 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 one Fuck, he's in a very bad, very bad. Stun, 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 faint. That side, that side. Another one side. Gotta say, the comms there, super serious. Obviously, this team has had their struggles with producing, you know, the right players at the right time and maybe getting some of those serious comms in. Right there was all business as usual. Imperium, what were your thoughts? Wow. So, like, so calm. I, I was expecting it to be a, a frantic... You know, ball of, of madness, not against them, but in terms of how fast paced this game is. But they're so calm, so cool, so collective. And I love the little subtle things of such as we can win this right. Psychologically, you gotta know that as a player, psychologically, when your teammate is saying, We can do this, guys, we got this, we can win. That plays a big part in you succeeding. And I love that. I think it was balance. That, that made those kind of little remarks so good from FM420. I, like, I had a massive smile on my face all throughout listening. I think I'm right there with you. And, and, you know, they've had their struggles after the beginning of the season. I think they have been mm. their own worst, you know, fear. Their, their biggest competitor yes. is themselves. They have been fighting the struggles, the inner demons. And right here, the demons on the other side of the board are definitely not making it easy for them. The lead's still in the hands of F and 420. We're buckling up for a P3 rotation. The break comes back through, and the side of Animus finding a little bit of stability on this three point. Now the push coming through. Drari looking like the speed demon is going to be able to find two with the purifier, looking to cleanse the souls of this FN420 team. He does enough just to get the job done on the break there as it is going to be held. And his split decision now is balanced, looking to be able to be uh, pushing the front side and the back side. Approach here from three. They are not really trying to double down for the break, but balance does enough for it himself. And with the last 10 seconds in, they're going to be able to keep their lead and the advantage for this P4 rotation where they found a lot of success on the first hill rotation around. Like, if you look at the KDs, FM420 don't have the majority of the players in the positive KD, but it doesn't matter because they're playing the objective game really well. They're playing the spawns extremely well, which is allowing, to, allowing them to spend more time on the hard point, which is giving them the lead that they currently hold on. So this is very intelligent play from FM420. Intelligent indeed. Now, as you can see, bread and butter right here. Grizz looking to shut it down. He gets three in the feed, but he's going to be out. Drari looking to make the break. Finally, a little bit of solitude. Wrong. Here comes Hez. Hez, just a demon faints right there on the objective. They are stacking it too damn well. And Animus, they are not going to be able to find any success the second time around on this P4 rotation. As a matter of fact, the break is going to be sustained. Multiple entries in. Multiple denies. And this is going to be FN 420 setting themselves up. They're going to be damn near uh, close to 25 points closing it out. They are going to fall off the objective for a moment. So looking like 29, but your opponent's need 100. This is a picture-perfect scenario if you're FN 420. And Animus, they need to find a way wow. to take down this uh, FN 420 squad and extend this game. They're at least guaranteeing a P2 if they uh, get a majority of this L. And as far as I know, this will be the first game that Animus lose or drop should i say inside the mobile mayhem season if i'm 
correct in, in saying that. Uh, so, uh, an even bigger plus, an even bigger confidence boost for FN422 essentially slay the current beast of the Mobile Mayhem season and really help to kick themselves off in towards the season, coming towards the midway point. Only 20 more points required and it's all systems go for FN420. Slayer here with the Annihilator getting the break, getting the contest. Can't win off this hill, but you got to be able to get the break there on the P2 site now, as you can see. Animus, they're looking to play a little bit far spread now, as they've got to be able to be here for the test. They also got to set up for new, and this is a bit of a conflict now, as you can see. They might be losing the spawns out. Drawry does what a massive gunfight, but repeats the angle. Kosh! There to open the door, and the floodgates might be compromised. Drawry does get the god spawns, but he's going to be instantly taken out again. Marvel and Gathelia looking to combine there. Oh, big two-piece from behind! Gathelia doesn't hit the second shot, though. The third does. And it is a matter of seconds. Faints taking down this. Spawns and flip, but Gathelia finds the two necessary. The break's going to hold. No, it's all on Grizz. This is disaster striking twice here for Animus. They have managed to keep the push off for a moment, but they got to be flawless for the remainder of this game, and I just don't see that happening. Death store to matter when, not if at this stage of the game. And that's going to be the case. FN420 take down the side of Animus in game one of this se series. Hard point slum is theirs. They own it. They deserve it. And couldn't ask for a better start in this series. I made a bold accusation earlier. And I said, I think Animus take this in two. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've already got an upset on a board here. FN 420, don't, you know, don't get it confused. They have been their own worst competition in yeah. this series. I don't think I have seen them have a a solid day yet. This is a solid start. You got to thank the entire team for putting their best foot forward. As a matter of fact, I'm looking at the KDs. They look so damn close. It's disgusting. 30 and 34, 30 and 31, 37 to 33. I've never seen a team full of 30s on any team come through. Yeah. This is just a, a phenomenal beast of a game. Nobody expecting it. FN 420, they earned that first game. Big win. 250 to 194. Wasn't even close. The comeback was a factor, but... Man, when you've just been solid on those P2 rotations, those P2 breaks, hell, even getting a lot of uh, bank off of P1, and you know P4 was a lockdown for them. Sheesh. Hell of a game, a way to start the series. And, I, and again, I know when I highlight, I think it was about two-thirds of the way through the, the match that the majority of the FN420 players didn't have positive KDs that they were focused on the objective that ended up rewarding them because they then all all bar one ended up with positive kds and it just kind of shows that they the foundation of what was hard point especially in this sums match was very much there for uh, um fn 420 compared to animus I, I kind of want to put that down to maybe a little bit more practice on this map i, I don't know uh, oh, only animus can tell us that to an extent right uh, but other than that, very, very strong fundamentals. And I, I hope, to be fair, I'm all for FN420 taking this series 2-0, to, to be fair. Yeah, I said it was going to be a 2-0. You know, I might not be lying there, but ah, uh, true, this, that, that's, a, that's a tall ask, bro. I'm going to be honest with you. When it, it comes is, to it firing is. range, my guys over at Animus have some of the most elite sniper talent. And I've seen... Yeah this first-hand experience like these guys just i mean they're built differently when it comes to search and any team that's you know a zim coach team has that advantage rolling into it obviously we, we talk about animus but on the flip side of things na also has uh a, a diamond in the rough in nysl who um you know they have been in the past historically speaking one of the better teams in search of Shore. here recently their focus has been flipped but that's neither here nor there that is just showing the value of having a you know a coach a washed coach at that uh, in Zem. He will provide you some strats for search or destroy. And Animus, uh, you know, they're kind of cracked beforehand. So you throw that into the mix. It's just fuel into the fire. Now, as the fire is getting hot, we're going to be jumping right into the oven, my guy. It's uh, the firing range search or destroy. And I got to say, 
FN420 picking up a big game one. Can they follow it up for a 2 0? Oh, it's a tall ask, bro. It's a tall ask. Possible. It's a. It's a it's a very tall ask, uh, but again, I, I tried to, you know, I, I tried to live on on a bit of a hype train moment, and I look at that as a very big hype train moment from FN420, and how dumb, like it wasn't like, let's be fair, Hardpoint, it wasn't even close, it's not like it was 250 to 220, it was a d pretty dominating result, all things considered, from FN420, but now, they start whew, off on the part of having to really hold things down inside Search to Destroy. Oh, how the mighty have fallen. Three have dropped instantly. Faints? We didn't even mention my name, Faints! Why did we not mention him? My guy is on a spree. Two in a row there. Slayer finds the last. Sniper, oh my sniper talent, pound for pound. Faints, Slayer. They get the better of the trades. And I don't think... Uh, not a single kill comes through for uh, for Animus. A shutdown round to follow up the shutdown performance into Hardpoint. Strong, strong start. Maybe the Animus cages has been rattled, right? When you go into a season and you go undefeated, you, you can't forget what it's like to lose to an extent, right? And you might lose in scrims, but that tends to be less important. You might lose in a different tournament. But again, when you go into a specific tournament off the back of not losing a game, you maybe forget what it's like. And then it's a little bit harder to deal with it. And right now, the cages of Animus being very much rattled by FN420. The cages and walls being knocked right here is certainly a beast of a start here for FN420. They started hot in the hard point. They finished hot as well. So we see second round, a little bit of a change of pace here. It's still aggression. 100% felt FN420 putting the pressure oh, on. Woodside push. Cathilla. He's going to be compromised. Oh, fades the Beautiful. shot. Stay clear. The bomb. He is compromised, and now it's all on Marvel. The 1v3, can he get the clutch? Oh, he misses out Great on Ez right there. Work. Gra oh, phenomenal Great teamwork. Great teamwork by FM420. Like, absolutely spectacular, right? Going on to Cathedral. Yeah, they knew where he was, but they didn't take it for granted. They pushed the duo up the stairs onto the high ground, and they took him out. Very, very good once again from FN420. A brick wall right here is... I, I gotta say, Animus have just fall and flat footed flat faced i just i don't know what's going on i'm sure they're scratching their head too like where the hell did hmm. this fn 420 team come from well we know all too often how well this team plays but they have been their biggest biggest competitor so far now the push coming through balance shut down grizz finally able to pick up one kosh I absolutely dropped as well. Has finally able to get a tray but it's narcs the dangle from that Love range though Gary. god damn Woo! Very strong by Drari, much deserved to leave heads on his own with the DLQ. Looks her through the door, the trader can't find it, has to switch on over. The bomb has been planted, run out of time. He can do nothing about it. The shutdown finally. Animus puts something on the board. Drari was definitely the playmaker in that one for me. Yeah, you got to bring something to the table. Can't be coming home with nothing to show for it. And right now, it has been... All FN 420 in the feed. That round was Animus's answer back, but it's two rounds in a row that they had to go through and endure. Here comes the push again. Grizz trying to be a little bit of a, a first blood first. Madman Rage. Kosh makes a pay. Drari there to get the trades, though. And now here comes the uh, ensuing round. It has been one for one so far. Minute 30 left on the clock to push towards this A long site. Marvel looking to anchor. And lead the pack. Gathelia gets the trophy down. Maybe looking at a quick plan. But Faints looking to spoil. Kosh finds Drari. Oh, got to hit those Faints. Big kills through the uh, the door frame of Trailer. The push comes in. They handle business. Two for the price of none. And now it's only two left. Kosh and Slayer left to pick up the pieces. 2v3 style. Slayer on his own. I like the initial defense that came out from... FN420, and I even think they responded extremely well off the back of Kosh getting that kill to shut down that B movement that played on through. But in the end, the power became too much for them, and the bomb has been planted. Slayer left to his own devices. Time is now 
ticking out is he has to make some kind of push on towards the A bomb site. Oh, big shots. Narks dropped. 1v2. 27 seconds on the clock. Intensity high. Clutch rate pretty low here oh. as Marvel and Cathelia looking to tag team it up, but to see Slayer get the uh, the info he needed to go ahead and get the push, double down the bomb head glitched. I kind of like it. No Bold. Cathelia no no playing the time. Oh, it's the push. They collectively go in in the tandem. And that is exactly how you play your twos there. No loose ends needed. No casualties. And we've had two for twos so far. Who's going to take the advantage before we flip sides? Good effort by Slayer. I appreciate what he was trying to do, but indeed, Animus, play, Animus played that correctly as a duo with the bomb planted. They knew they had firm control, and he just had, had to wait for the time to strike. Now, Cthulhu once again with the bomb in his hands, looking towards the mid sector of this map. You see Slayer defending that B bomb side all on his lonesome, which isn't a bad thing. The two two set of a balance is going to get taken down. Yeah, right through the walls there. Faint still holding down the bottom side of the staircase. Can't really get a jump shot on that. This is a cheeky shot right through the wall there on the side. But the nade shot is going to prevail there. Faint's one shot. Going to be able to evacuate the area before the deed is done and recover. Now as uh, one player in mid, Drari, looking to play the demon role. Does find one. And he's in the spawn sites now. This is a big, big Last round on the attack here. Dragic sights on Slayer. Slayer's going to be able to evade to cosh the push to ensue. Now he's got a heal. Slayer drops Marvel. It's like a 3v4. That. Big, big round here. 40 seconds on the clock as the bomb has been planted. And now it's all oh. on FM 420 to retake with three. <laughs> Gosh, on your own, you can't be that heavily separated from your team, especially when you have the body disadvantage and that bomb has been planted. I get that maybe he just had to commit to it. His dryer is going to get shut down. That's a little bit better. Slayer with the pistol is going to whip on through. But Slayer gets taken down. Faints is left on his own. He's going to go for it. But it's just too little. Too late. Time ticks down. And 3-2 in the favor of Animus. Here we go. Flip sides. Started off on the wrong foot, right? It was fine three in a row. And FM420, all that momentum they had from the hard point has came to a halt. Will they be able to muster up enough to close this series out in two? Well, I'm going to be honest with you. With the way that Animus has played these past three rounds, they have not given any kind of hope for FN420 to uh, to see that day come. Faints now taking everything into his hands. Does find one. Gathelia drops. Grizz can't be denied. Faints able to find Drawy there in the transition in the trailer. Grizz now is the last player inside. Balance. Bro, you got to peek that before you do. You can't walk in blindly. Bomb goes down, and that is going to be two players left. Faints and Slayer left to collect what is owed, and that is going to be a difficult one now as the bomb right there on the staircase of Trailer. And you've got Grizz right there holding the fort down. <laughs> exactly. I mean, come on. What better way to round the corner than have a doof doof in your face? You shall not pass is what Grid is saying to the whole of FN420, but Slayer is going to come in with the pistol traded very, very quickly. Lee's faints on his own. He's been able to pick up the bomb, but what is he going to be able to do with the 1v2? It's going to be very tough. The smoke comes out. He's going to be able to play on through the trader. Has a pistol play. He comes in, gets the close to the marble, looks for the second, but not enough. I gotta say, this is just 200 IQ from Narx. He gets the smoke down, disengages from the contact feints initially, trying to get the kills through Armory. Disengages, gets the smoke down, rotates back through Trailer, and there's Marvel right there to get the trade. Gets knocked, and sure enough, Narx is right there to answer the front door. Feints had nowhere to go. Big round for Animus to start off the uh, defense now as Narx looking for the first blood balance, able to cross freely. Man, you shall not pass. Well, guess what, homie? You passed, and there's Cathelia. He's passed as well now as Kosh has dropped. A little bit of compromise here on the bottom side of Wood. Fates looking to steal the deal in the back. Uh, trying to deal with that pest inside his spawn side, but Cathelia, he's, I mean, he's free right here at the bottom. Nobody there to take him out. What's going on? Balance. Slayer. Slayer doing absolute wonders with the pistol, to be fair. Props to him. Maybe that's his secret weapon as they now have the body advantage. And FN420, let's be fair, they need this round. They do not want to go into the next round 
on match point against them. They need to try and trade it through. At least for now, they have the bomb planted. They can slow down just a little bit and set up a strong defense. And well, here comes Marvel. He's on the flank. The ones are being played. You're talking about the best sniper talent in all of EU right here and stacked on one team. Slayer at the bottom side of the wood. Marvel's picked up the doof doof. Now it's coming through. The shots. Oh, most breaks it, but he's won. And now he's going to be able to recover. Narx is done with. And now it's all on Marvel. Around the corner. Balance. Here we go. A little bit more. And there it is, 3-4 indeed, as the gap is being slowly covered. If in 420 trying to buckle up and even things up, finding a little balance themselves. We'll see how this next round pays off. Pretty well played come out from FN 420 as the attacking side. Balance is going to get taken down very quickly by Narx, and he's the bomb holder. Uh-oh, SpaghettiO goes from... Hero to zero for balance and FM420 potentially across this current round. All right, now it's just an opportunity for them to get that uh, bomb picked up. Obviously, looking for smoke maybe to clear the path. Narc's looking to just hold it off. by. you hear the shots. It whizzed right by his head. But the deed is done. Hez picks it up. He collects the tax. Now it's Grizz. God. What the hell is he doing in tower with a doof doof? What are you doing, Grizz? You cheeky, cheeky little angle right here. Gets the nade shot out, but it doesn't get anything he needs. One trade in, and it's in favor of Animus and all of FM 420. They're kind of stuck in wood now as they make one wrong move. They're going to take one wrong step right into Fate's hand. It's Marvel and Grizz right there to, uh, to make something shake now here. 44 seconds. This round has just been time wasted can fn 420 get this bomb plant down get Delia? he's dealt with that is the biggest trade they could have gotten and now here comes the push man this is such a close round such a close game across the board but marvel he's such a difference maker and just like that it's all going horribly wrong and that face is the last player standing and down he goes five to three match point for animus this is it do or die here for the side of fm 420 well not just quite yet we got a game three promised if they lose this one but you're talking about giving hope to a team like animus eh, i don't know if you like those odds enough we'll see now as the a side is going to be it's given away for free there's nobody there animus have pushed up aggressively they're going balls to the wall drari Hez, have you two met? I tell you, my God, they are closing it out. Three players left. They're all on the site. The bomb's going to go down. This is not the right play. Slayer's going to be left on his own. The Deagle can only do so much. is there for the trade. Here comes the body shots. Nope. Okay, Grizz is being uh, a gentleman this round. Okay, good for him. Like, when you really look at this overall, there just wasn't enough adaptability from... Uh, the side of FM420 in terms of they became a little bit too easy to read, right? And that's where you saw the aggression start to ramp up from Animus when they were the defending side, going from round to round to round to begin with. Yeah, props to FM420, they kind of deserve those first two rounds, but from there on out, there just wasn't enough, hey, when they were the attacking side, for example, did they ever really go for a B-bomb plant? No, right? So it became just too easy for them to be read by 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 Animus, and they took full advantage of it. I mean, I agree. I think strategy and creativity have a big factor when it comes to search or destroy. Obviously, if it ain't broke, don't break it, right? Don't fix it. Don't try to do anything differently. I think that was the story of the day for, for Animus. They find the way to make something happen after being manhandled in the first two rounds. I mean, let's be real. FM420 came in with a lot of momentum, but that momentum came to a big stop once that third round hit, and only one round successfully found after that. So we're buckling up for it. It is going to be a Game 3 bound as I'm taking a look at the spread. We are moving over to the snowy hills of Summit. A change of scenery, a change of pace, two rounds fire, or two games fire back-to-back.
talking about it's some of the hottest uh, stuff oh, I've what? seen in Har in slums, Hardpoint, and then that firing range, search or destroy. It is a spicy one. Now as we're gonna cool things off a little, chill, Daddy. Summit domination, and based off of what we just saw there, I mean the Hardpoint looks solid for FN 420, but are we yeah. starting to go back and revisit that and maybe see that it was just less played or less scrimmed, less practiced from Animus, or was that a stout performance? I think it was a stout performance from FN4. I, I cannot I, deny them that. Exactly. I, I think because of how strong of a, of a win it was, it was a stout performance, but there is that element of a, a, a lack of a lack of maybe practice on that map from, from Animus. This summit, it's ironic because I compared slums to summit, right? Uh, so this map is fast paced in itself, but of course Animus are, are clearly going to be a, a lot more familiar with the map. So I think it's going to be a clearly closer contest between the two teams. My, my, my one fear is that there's a little bit of doubt planted in the seat of FN420 and that might see them play a little bit too passively to an extent and Animus will smell that. They'll smell that fear and they'll take full advantage of it if they can. Can't leave anything out here in this uh, next one as it is make or break for both teams. Solid start from FN 420. Fall flat on their face afterwards though as the S&D was just a blender after those first two rounds. We'll see if they can answer back. This is their last opportunity to take down one of the best teams in EU. I'm not saying they are the best team. Obviously, you've got to throw Nova in the mix in, in that contention. But Nova's not in this series. We're not worried about them. We're, we're worried about Animus and FN420. We'll see if FN can do the impossible and make the uh, best of three theirs. This Domination Summit is going to be the determining factor. And I think you are absolutely right when you made the comparison to uh, to Slums. As that map, it's, it's a little bigger... But in comparison, it's the link that uh, you know we're referring to, right? It's it's an elongated map. It's not one of those ones that's square in comparison to some like you know, uh, what are some Hackney Yards a little more? Well, Hackney Yards probably yeah. a little. It's a little wider, but it's long as well. It, it we're is. talking about Raid. Raid is a square map with three huge lanes to dictate. This map exactly. is three condensed lanes, and the traffic is just. I mean. Have you ever been in New York City? This is exactly what it's about to be. The interactions are high. The price is also high. The reward is going to be even bigger. Look, uh, whatever whatever happens in terms of FN420 win or lose, I suppose focusing on if they lose, I don't think anything can be taken away from the fact that they're the first team in this season of Mobile Mayhem to take a game off Animus, and that shows how much that they are continuing to evolve and improve and, and you know i'll always say that about teams whether they finish first or or seventh if they show a level of improvement and evolution throughout a season they're on the right path this is just one tournament across what will hopefully be a strong 2022 on mobile esports scene so being able to improve throughout one season of a tournament can then help you in terms of improving throughout season, uh, you know, s stage two, stage three, stage four, the Masters, whatever it is that comes up. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. So FM420, be proud of how you perform so far in this series and use that to build on towards the next games. I know we still got a game to go, but I just wanted to highlight that FM420 have put in a hell of a fight today so far. Oh, you're absolutely right now. We're going to take a few moments to get into this next game as one of the players has had a little bit of a uh, connection yes. issue. The Wi-Fi crashing for Kosh. You see he's uh, left the left the lobby right now. We're going to give him a moment to get collected. As uh, we do that, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the results of the day. If you're just now joining in, you have missed out on one of the best days here in EU so far. 2-1 win for Illuminati. It was a banger. Uh, Euro Elite just came through with the biggest hard point win but could not follow it up with a search or a dom performance one with seven not found they crossed the uh you know they crossed the t's they dot their eyes they do everything they needed to to close it out in two but i gotta say an anarchy team with a little bit of roster changes 
Definitely made for a spicy series. I could see that team causing some mayhem later on in the season, especially with the right synergy, the right chemistry moving forward as, uh, you know, Toby makes his debut. Didn't necessarily have the best performance, but that's quite all right. There's plenty of time to improve in that regard. FM420 and Animus were midway through that series. It's 1-1 right now. We're about to buckle up for a domination on Summit. Cross, uh, or not cross, but the hard point was a solid one for FN. Animus, they're known mm -hmm. for the search. And it obviously paid off as uh, that series, or this series rather, is in a game three now as we're getting geared up for it. It does look like uh, we're still waiting for that fifth player to come through. Thoughts? Mm. With him having that Wi-Fi issue, it's uh, it's tough. Look, you know, I, I don't know exactly what the rules say in terms of time limit for the for a player rejoining and, and how long they have to to get a fifth player in or what the situation is. So we'll look to try and clarify that because, yeah, as of right now, we're still waiting for, for Kosh or at least a fifth player to, to join from FN420. Like, we still have one more series left tonight and it feels like it, tonight has kind of been four series worth of games in terms of how action-packed the games have been um so yeah it, it, it's been a, a great evening especially considering i took a week off unfortunately i don't think i've actually been able to cast nova so far in this mobile meme i don't believe i have just how things have planned out so i'm excited to 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 get on board with seeing how they perform in the, in this mobile mayhem season tonight be more than impressed and hopefully in one more minute but hopefully um, FM420 can, can all right well we're about to find out now is uh still not a fifth being presented it's been a uh, pretty eventful day and obviously we're in a stall waiting for that player to join up and I think you have caught some of the better matches obviously Thursday was interesting it started off great it ended just so yeah. I mean let me let me tell you bro day and I were casting it because Gil started off and couldn't yes. finish you know how these days get. Okay. I, mean, it's, I mean, we're two and a half hours already in. And we're not even in our imagine, first series yet. Imagine not being able to finish. I, yeah, right. Hey, man, my guy Gil, I mean, he's sexy Jesus for a reason, man. I, he, I definitely finished, but he did it. And, I, you know, I feel kind of bad. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, But they joined in. And, bro, let me just tell you, we were talking about what we were going to eat by the time we got into that uh, third game. It was, it was a 4v5 that Lux barely won mm. with five players. Literally in the last P3 rotation, and we get into the search and destroy, it wasn't even close, bro. Uh, at yeah. that point, it was a 4v5 where Lux couldn't produce a fifth player. It was just a shit show, to say the least. Um, Kosh has joined, so hopefully we should be able to get the show on the road if he can actually ready up. I know that he maybe has to uh, get his loadout ready to an extent because but uh yeah i'm 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 pumped i'm ready to go i want to see who's gonna win this series it is game three of the series to remind you if you just have joined game one hardpoint in slums was won by fn 420 but in game two search and destroy um in firing range it was won by uh animus so we are seeing a game three happen we are indeed now as the action is starting off. The snowy sides of Summit looking pretty sexy indeed now. This is going to be a chill one. Who am I kidding? This is going to be anything but chill. This is going to be fast-paced. You thought the interactions were high in slums? Well, guess what, homie? Buckle up. We've got a show on board. Indeed, a game three is on the horizon. Grizz looking for the contest up here. Gets the uh, shots through. But Kosh looking to deal with that. He's got better Wi-Fi now as he reset three-piece to start the game. And no home flag here for Animus. What is going on? Uh, something happened in Marvel to begin with. Because for the first 30 seconds, he was just standing at the start point doing absolutely nothing. I don't know what happened there. But now he's into the mix and he makes a count. Gets a kill on Takashi. But he's instantly taken out in return. And put the B site in into the hands of, uh, into the hands of Animus. It's not the start that FM420 wanted. All right, not the start that Animus wanted. If you look at it, man, good night. It has been a big awesome. blunder oh, now. Sorry, we... Animus wanted. Apologies. Oh, you didn't say Animus? I thought I thought I heard you say Animus. 
No, no, I didn't. I said FM420 is a mistake. Oh, baby. Marvel still AFK. This is a F in chat right here. Obviously, we allowed Kosh the mm. opportunity to uh, reset. And lo and behold, the stall might have paid off because guess what? Marvel is just not moving at all. The Cali 6 coming out from Narcs, you sweaty being you. FN420 dominating so far so good. They get the third game brought to you by the uh, hardpoint victory. And you said it earlier. It wasn't close. You were damn right when you said that too. SKS on Slayer. I think that's a good loadout in this kind of map with how some of the hard points can fare off. But a couple of Mac 10s on board will do nobody any harm in how close this map is in terms of battles and um, how easy it is to come eye to eye, toe to toe with the teams around you. Marvel is still at the spawn point, so it is technically a 5v4 in the favor of FM420. And that makes things so. Difficult for Animus. Oh, difficult is definitely a word you could use, but is an under S or an under. It's an understatement. It's just not a four v five on this map, and there it goes. Marvel disconnects. That's tough, bro. I hate we get a game three, and we have one player disconnect. Obviously, we can't control that. It's clearly on the player, but I know that all of Animus are just like punching air right now. We take all that time for one player on the flip side of things to. Make sure his internet's correct, and lo and behold, I don't know what, what happened with Marvel. Yeah. Uh, just a very unfortunate case. It's a shame. Uh, I feel bad. Um, I presume... I don't know if the rules say, Craig, is he allowed to rejoin if his connection comes back, or is it just a thing where he, he's just not allowed to rejoin? I don't think he can. I think once you disconnect, you're done. Okay. Okay. It's one of those oh, well. instances where, like, if his game crashed, he would have already reconnected back into the lobby. Yeah, fair. And fair. once he leaves the lobby, it's because of the, the time delay that it took for him to get back in. Mm. It's tough. It is tough indeed. But tough. Uh, the BCAP coming through here, a little bit of salvage ability here for the side of uh, Animus. But quickly, an A-cap comes through. The C-cap looks like it might be traded, but the B certainly coming through back for... The side of FM 420. This is never a spot you want to be in, especially if you're in a game three. And it, it definitely makes it awkward for the players. It makes it even more awkward for us as we're trying to be fair and equal and consistent. But there is nothing fair about a 4v5. Nah, it, it's it's never easy. Of course, Animus will still continue to put up a, a fight across the board and they'll try everything that they can to get back into this game. Maybe if they look to go for a bit of a switch around on the A side, of course, coming into the second half, teams are going to be reset. But uh, yeah, good stuff indeed for the side of FN420. It may not be the way they... they want to win the series and want to win the game that's outside their control and all they can do is grab the points grab the opportunity of course carry on with it oh, here we go we're into the thick of it now as uh drawer is going to be able to find two with the pure fire looking to cleanse off the point is going to be able to do so the b site looking like a solo job so far the a cap looking like it might be flipped Drari, is he going to be able to just do this all by himself yeah he does but the, uh, the answer back. Oh, get laced. Lightning strikes coming through. Not going to strike anything other than the ground. The sea cap not going to be able to get capped as well. The 4v5. We saw it earlier last week or later last week. Certainly was uh, a, a nail biter for performance, but Lux, they come through and upset uh, Anarchy, unfortunately. Not the case here, though, as uh, A looks like it might be. Held off one player there to uh, hold the push. That's Narks. He's uh, been a bit of demon, but is finally going to be nerfed. And now the A cap. What is going on? Is Drari going to be able to hold it off? He does. Man, this is just. It's so damn difficult to cast a 4v5, bro. It, it is. And, and honestly, I got left at 420. I think they're content <laughs> having a, a little bit of fun. Um, the three piece has at least been started by the side of, um, or at least been captured by the side of, uh, by the side of Animus, but quickly a retaken 104 to 85. They do want to be careful because they don't want to be killing too much. They don't want to, uh, you know, bite off more than they can chew in terms of having fun against Animus because even as a four man team, 
they are pretty dangerous in their own right. No, they're dangerous indeed now as they have kept FN420 flagless for a majority of this uh, second half. Right now, the C cap looks like it might be a thing. The B cap does come through. It's solidified. Four players for Animus not able to cover as much ground. And Hez does it solo on CA. Going to be traded indeed. And this is just a tough one here. Animus might be just a victim of their own, you know, scenario. I don't know what happened with Marvel, mm. but I hope he does... Uh, I hope he does have everything under control. Triple cap comes through. And now it's a lot serious. A lot more serious here. Plays for FM420. You know, while it is serious, what do you think? A quick listen in just to kill the time? Yeah, let's yeah. have a bit of a quick listen on, on how uh, FM420 are playing this. I go across. I'm going to cluster C. This one C, this one C. There you go. I'm going to go E. Ah, unfortunate, unfortunate. Uh, verdict. Uh, rest. RP in the chat for Marvel. Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad. That's not oh, shout out to Gizem, to Yelda, to Yuji. <laughs> Love you all. Gizem. And Milk's Fridge, uh, you're my guy. Don't forget them, bro. I'm sorry. This is unfortunate. It is what it is. And, yeah. Okay, I'm done with my speech. You can leave the call, guys. Uh, there's nothing uh, oh, running interesting on here. Oh, you bastard. Ah, nice. <laughs> I hate those guys. Those guys are the worst. I'm just kidding, obviously. I. Hey, by the way, yeah. people say struggling in 5v4. They're not struggling at all. Like it's They're clearly having fun in that regard, and that's not taking anything away from Animus. But yeah, they know that they have the body advantage and that plays a big part in domination well you know i've said it before and you know i'll say it again it wouldn't be eu if we wouldn't have you know chicanery you know jokes you know dqs <laughs> forfeits it wouldn't be eu if we didn't have all of the above right now all of the above yep. has led us to a 2-1 win in favor of fn420 you heard it. it's very unfortunate obviously we can't control it neither can you know the players so they are just, you know, maximizing on the opportunity they have at hand. And obviously the opportunity was them getting a 2-0 or 2-1 win. And, you know, that's the case. That's it. Game number three, 200-115, to 115, 4v5, RIP. Yeah, it, it is It is genuinely unfortunate what happened to Marvel. Um, every player is responsible for their own connection. And... There's an unfortunate fine line between pre-game lobby and, and in-game and, and a line has to be drawn somewhere and that line is drawn when the game is started. Before that, the player has an issue. They're given that relevant amount of time as Kosh was given to get their connection sorted and back into the game. But it could have been the other way around. It could have been the case where Kosh didn't get his connection sorted in time and it would have had to have forfeited you know that's the thing the line was drawn and it just unfortunately uh hit animus in the wrong way and and yeah um they could still be proud of how they played and certain destroy but fm 420 they'll take the 15 points they'll take the win and like i said they can evolve they can grow they can step up with that no you're absolutely right you know it, it is what it is and the show must go on. Obviously, the show mm. led us to a game three where it was a 4v5. It's never fun seeing that, especially when you got yeah. a highlight match of the day coming down to the wire and one player disconnects. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. So that is it. We're not yeah. even going to talk about the series. The stout hard point game was a stout search or destroy game. Both teams in their own regards. Had it been a 5v5, I don't even know if the results would have been different, to be fair. I hope that it would have been a lot closer. But we'll never know. Uh, that's going to be it for that series. So we're going to get geared up for our fourth and final. Taking a look at the uh, the results from the day so far. You just saw a little bit of a blunder. A little bit of connectivity issues. A little bit of a 2-1 scenario. FM40, uh, 420 take the bag. 15 points. And Animus, mm. they're not going to be walking uh, walking out empty-handed. They're going to earn five points. But they were definitely looking for a better, a best-case scenario. Obviously.